Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Halloween is pure evil. I would tell my children on their level depending on their age, just to let them know there are people in this world who knowingly serve Satan, and they do hurt and harm people and animals to please Satan. Be sensitive to your child, but be sure they understand the dangers of this wicked world. Teach your children to be mindful and vigilante of their surroundings, and where they go and who they are with, and what to do if someone tries to bring them harm as best they can. Stranger, danger. And always let someone trustworthy know where you are. Halloween originated from the Druid Samhain festival. This horrific festival involved dark practices such as child sacrifice, burning human fat, and much more. The scary part is, these sacrifices still go on today in certain places. Halloween is a religious day, but it is not Christian. Tom Sanguinet, a former high priest in Wicca has said, the modern holiday that we call Halloween has its origins in the full moon closest to November 1st, the Witch's New Year. It is a time when the spirits, or demons, are supposed to be at their peak power and revisiting Earth. Halloween is purely and absolutely evil. Anton Levy, the founder of the Church of Satan, said, I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Welcome to Halloween. In October 13th to 30th, preparations start for All Hallows Eve, Samhain or Halloween abduction, holding and ceremonial preparation of individual for human sacrifice. 13 is backward Halloween date. In October 28th to 30th, Satanist High Holy Day, related to Halloween human sacrifices, start each day, children as young as 3 years old get multiple times, tortured and sacrificed. After they torture the children, they kill them and suck their adrenalized blood. They also use water torture to torture the children. Another ritual is a ritual where children are put in a forest and have to hide, and Satanists have to find them. Once they do, they can do whatever they desire to them, and then kill them. Only kids that are from satanic family won't be sacrificed, but they still get tortured and raped. October 30th to 31th, blood and sa Climax, association with the demons, animal and or sacrifice continue. Halloween blood sacrifices continues until November 1st. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. No, this is not the Rome, this was Pennsylvania Station, New York. They claim it was completed in 1910, and then in the 60s, it was completely demolished. The main reason they claimed for its demolition was difficulty with upkeep and cleaning. It took three years to destroy it and was dumped in the Jersey swamp. They replaced it with a drab windowless low ceiling drat maze. The question is, how did they build this massive architectural wonder before the first commercially available power tools were created, and what was this used in the first place? The 
The first electric lighting in cities appeared in 1879 to 1880. To provide such illumination as in the photos and engravings, it was necessary to conduct equipment, set up, start production before that, and produce a colossal amount of bulbs, wires, and the rest of the equipment. And where would the power to generate that much power come from? Not to mention the fact that Frankfurt boasted about similar illumination back in 1730, 150 years before the official date. Or one could simply use atmospheric electricity, etheric, with tin amalgam capacitors. The same ether that D. Mendeleev put at the top of his periodic table. I know that most of you here are very conscious beings and care about saving, let's say, our planet. However, zero emission has always been a scam, and I will explain. Let's take for example the gas-guzzling Audi Q7 4.0 SUV, which produces about 199 grams of CO2 per mile driving, and then compare it to the new Hummer EV that is marketed as zero emissions car and gets electricity from the power grid. Hummer weighs 9,000 pounds, it emits approximately 341 grams of CO2 per mile driven, based on average global power grid consumption, which is significantly more than basically every single petrol or diesel powered car sold today. There may be no exhaust coming from the back of the new electric vehicles, but electricity that drives it definitely creates way more pollution, as most of the energy generated still comes from burning oil or coal. Because of this, EVs will still be responsible for upstream emissions until the grid is completely carbon-free. There is no such thing, of course, as a zero-emissions vehicle. The real question is, where are the emissions associated with the electric car? Because what you do with an electric vehicle is, you don't eliminate emission. You export them somewhere else. You have to dig up about 500,000 pounds of materials to make a single 1,000 pounds battery. It takes 100 to 300 barrels of oil to manufacture a battery that can hold one barrel of oil equivalent of energy. Just manufacturing the battery can have a carbon debt rate ranging from 10 tons to 40 tons of CO2. And the plans that are in place to increase the use of batteries will require an increase in production of minerals like lithium, cobalt, and zinc. Demand for those minerals will increase between 400% to 4,000%. There isn't enough mining in the world to make enough batteries for that many people for their cars. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.